I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Hello everyone and welcome to the 10K Q&A. Now, some of you may accuse me of being unable to count. And that would be legit. But I just want to say that there was Christmas break and then there was Oath of the Gate Watch and I had to choose between releasing this on time or more reasonably close to on time or giving you Oath of the Gate Watch content. And I wanted you guys to do well at your pre-releases. Now I have been waiting for this first question for a long time. J-Man is one of my earliest subscribers and in my 1K Q&A video, you can see that he missed his chance to ask a question. So I've been looking for his comment in the thousands of comments on my video, and I found his question. I would answer anything that J-Man asked at this point. And he asks, how did you get into playing Magic the Gathering? You know, you could have asked anything J-Man and I would have answered, but I guess this question will have to do. So my, my story is very like somewhat uninteresting, but also a little bit unusual in the sense that pretty much anyone with like a pretty nerdy background has an idea that Magic the Gathering is out there. And one day I just said, you know, I'd, I'd like to play that game and give it a go. So I looked up FNM and I just drafted right away. Never played Magic, I was just like, well, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't just draft. So I drafted, I went 2-2 and uh, in about three months, I started, you know, I won my first draft and I started, you know, winning on a reasonably frequent basis. Anaru LST asks, if you were a Planeswalker card, what colors would you be and what abilities would you have? Now for my 1K q and I was asked something very similar, but a creature card. So now we're upping the ante. Now I'm gonna pop the creature card right here so you guys can check it out. You can just pause the video if you wanna see that. But let's move on to the Planeswalker card. Guess who likes to piss people off with their deck construction? I do. Leo Berg asks, what has been the nicest thing that a random person in the MTG community has done for you? And what is the nicest thing that you have done for a random person in the MTG community? Well, the nicest thing done for me, I would have to say is my first night at draft. Uh, somebody gave me a die to keep track of my life total. And after the draft was over, Several people came over and gave like all of their draft commons and uncommons to me. Now, I know that we all understand that there is almost zero value in those cards, but to someone who's new, that is really awesome. It feels really great. And so I actually suggest doing that whenever there's a new person at your LGS, for example. Okay, and for the nicest thing that I've done for a random person in the MTG community, I mean, I have given away hundreds of dollars on my channel to literally random people, but it's possible that YouTubing doesn't count in the whole thing. Before I ever had a YouTube uh, at my LGS, I made a habit of when there was a new person, then I would say, oh, like, are you building a deck or something? And then they would say like, yeah, I'm building X deck. And then I go in my trade binder, I'd pick out a pretty darn good card for that deck and then I'd give it to them to help. So if they were saying like, oh, building a Sultai deck, then I'd take out like a Sidisi and I would just give it to them because that kind of thing feels really awesome to new players. Moonweft7 asks, if there was a battle royale that included all of the angels in Magic the Gathering, who do you think would win? And why do you think that they would win? I think this answer is easy. No one would win. Bruno Redalaza asks, did you realize that your videos are being watched by people all over the world? How do you feel about reaching those people? I did, and it's pretty darn cool. Here, I'll show you guys something that you normally don't get to see, Google Analytics. Now, if we take a look at who watches the channel, 
Obviously, the English-speaking nations dominate the top of the chart. I mean, it's an English channel. But the channel viewers after those first five or so are spread all over the place, and it's really cool to see that global audience. I interact with the whole globe in my comments section all the time. And I have to say it's really eye-opening to see the different viewpoints. Austin Skoda asks, what do you think of the Oath of the Gatewatch spoilers? Telepathic MTG asks, are you going to make a 3D alter tutorial? And how is life after your move? The answer to the first one is that I actually had that tutorial 99% done, and then a terrible accident occurred to the 3D alter, and I was just super bummed out. I could not refilm it right on the spot. But I definitely have that high on my to-do list. That's definitely coming out soon. I wanna share the knowledge on how to make those 3D alters as good as possible. As for how I'm doing after the move, it's, it's pretty great. I'm in Scotland, I'm eating haggis, drinking scotch whiskey, going to school, and hanging out. It's pretty awesome. The owner 247 asks, what other things do you enjoy doing besides playing magic? Hmm. I'm a planeswalker, so obviously I enjoy magic. However, I also enjoy painting, reading, and spending time in the tavern with a dark beer in my hand. Of course, I love walks through nature, as well as walking through the plains. But what I really need is a woman to walk through life with. Kevin Chen says, ask me whatever you want about magic, the channel, life, whatever anything counts, MTG degree. Okay then, questions. And then he asked 26 questions. So I'm gonna answer some of them just because of effort. How many hot dogs have you eaten in your lifetime? Uh, I'd say quite a few. Uh, especially when I was a kid going camping, you know, over the campfire making hot dogs. But as an adult, man, bratwurst is the deal. And which shelter do you buy yours from? <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you take one lump or two when it comes to tea? Two. What is your favorite band? Well, since that rules out all of the solo artists, I'd have to say maybe Simon and Garfunkel? I don't know, I like that old stuff. Thoughts on penguins? Well, I just saw some at the Tokyo Zoo. Here's some footage I took, and I have to say, they were pretty chill. <laughs> did it rub the lotion on its skin, or did it get the hose again? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> now here's a question that I felt a little bit bad about. It's by Mr. Wasting Time. I feel like this has completely left out those who are new and trying to learn. How am I supposed to win when I don't know what you are talking about? Now the answer here is that this is a real concern, but it's not something that I had a problem with before. You see, when I was a small channel, I had no, no like connection with any websites or any podcasts or anything like that. Just really hardcore players that just like tried to find everything that they could on YouTube found me on their own. And so since I had such a hardcore group of players, then I didn't have to worry about this kind of thing. But now that we have lots of new players joining the channel, which is awesome, I need to remember that not everyone knows, you know, the whole history of magic or whatever. So next time that I do a giveaway like this, I will make sure that newer players don't feel like they have no idea how to answer. James Rick asks, why are you so awesome? Seriously, I've only been around for one year, and you are already one of the best channels on YouTube. Why is it you are just so awesome? First, James, flattery will get you nowhere. Certainly not featured on one of my videos. Secondly, thank you. Do you mind if I, like, use that quote on, like, a book cover or channel trailer or something? That would be great. Face01Face asks, Who is the most influential in the making of your YouTube channel? Well, the answer is that unlike some YouTube channels, uh, there's actually zero collaboration going on with my YouTube channel. Everything is just me, from the video editing to the channel art, all that stuff I just do on my own, and I think that it's a really fun challenge. I like doing it on my own. 
However, I have to say a huge thank you to the musicians who put out their music for free on Creative Commons. I could never make my own music, and you guys are freaking awesome. Jerome Tomaszeki II asks, how long does it take to edit a video? Well, the answer to this is about three to seven hours with seven hours going towards things like pre-release guides where I'm really pulling up a whole bunch of images and whatnot. Um, but yeah, not, not terribly long, but it does take a while if you want it to look pretty decent. How do I horse asks? Well, it's already a question, isn't it? I, I don't know how you horse. What career were you thinking about getting into before deciding to get into YouTube? Or if YouTube is just a side project, what kind of job do you have? So the answer to this is that I am a student. I'm currently getting a master's degree in brewing and distilling, but a lot of people have asked questions like this one in the comments. So let me show you why YouTube is definitely not my job. Here is my channel status page. You'll notice here that monetization is turned off. Why is this? Because I hate ads. And due to the golden rule, I wouldn't make you guys suffer through the same thing that I find so annoying. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I might be the largest MTG YouTube channel that doesn't run ads. Kind of a cool trophy. Now, in previous videos, people have asked, basically, how do I throw money at you? I want to throw money at you. And uh, you can't. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have a P.O. Box. I don't have a tip jar on my channel. And that's kind of the way I like it. Um, by not taking any money from anyone, it allows me to just make completely outrageous, unasked for content on my channel. And I don't feel even a little bit bad about it because psh, nobody's paying me. Now, while I don't have any intention of ever running ads, a Patreon is not out of question in the channel's future. Of course, right now I'm doing really okay. Uh, but you know, if I'm ever like in between jobs or I want to make YouTube the, the full-time thing, maybe I'll have to make a Patreon and ask for you guys to be the shoulder that I lean on. But for now, it's just us pals sitting around on YouTube and talking about Magic the Gathering together. Now, I think we should end the video with the most asked question on all of my videos in recent history which is, what are those cool things behind you, and how can I make one? All right, let me just, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, what these are, are there uh, just two magic cards uh, in a picture frame, right? And I just hung them up with this Velcro style hanging system. And uh, yeah, it's just a very simple picture frame. I'll, uh, I'll take it apart and then find it hard to later line up the cards in it. But whatever, just show you. It's just a very pi simple picture frame. I got it for like, you know, a buck, two dollars, not too much. And uh, I just thought they looked really good. So yeah, I put them up there. Well, that's all the questions. I had fun answering them. I hope you guys had fun watching. And as always, I'll see you guys next video.